Hi, my name is Lauren Brown, and I teach graphic design and animation at Bossier Parish Community College. I first got into animation as a kid, and I never stopped watching it. Um, and I, I just knew that I wanted to be around the kind of people who made this stuff, and I wanted to figure out how to make it as well. There was just this fantasy aspect to it, um, this playfulness. I love the escape of it. Um, I wanted to bring that happiness to other people. My name is Tyler McDonald. I'm studying graphic design and digital media. I am currently in a design and animation class and I want to start my own business with animation and t-shirt design. I've been interested in graphic art since I was about 12 years old and I started watching a lot of cartoons. It's just something I saw as something I liked and I've grown to like it and draw a lot of it. Taking classes here has honed a lot of my skills. It's brought them into more of a circle of where I work with them. I would recommend this to anybody trying to become a graphic artist because we have just about anything you want to study here. It's an amazing program. We offer a lot of different courses in graphic design and animation. In graphic design, we start off with Photoshop. So you're taking things from different places and putting them together to make them look like they belong together. In Illustrator, you're creating graphics, so a lot of lines and gradients. You can do logos and layouts and things like that. Um, you know, mascots, all kinds of fun stuff. And then you can put those things together in InDesign when you're looking at, okay, how do I lay out a book? How do I lay out a pamphlet? Something like that. With animation, you can go, you can take your stuff from Illustrator or Photoshop and bring it into After Effects and have it all move around. You can go into 2D animation software and either draw frame by frame, or you can sort of puppet, like a little cutout puppets where the joints move. You can also go to 3D animation where you're sculpting something, giving it a color, and then putting bones in it so that you can animate it and move around in 3D space within the computer. So there are a lot of different areas to explore. Thank you for joining us for our 9-11 edition of This is Bipsy, I'm Katie Brock. You never know how quickly a day can change the course of history. September 11, 2001 started out just like any other Tuesday. People were heading off to work and children were off to school. Little did we know that that day would soon become one of the most pivotal days in United States history. As we commemorate the 18th anniversary of these tragic events, we'll take a look back on what exactly happened as well as hear stories from other people who experienced the day firsthand. On September 11, 2001, 19 militants associated with the Islamic extremist group Al-Qaeda hijacked four airplanes and carried out suicide attempts against targets in the United States. Two of the planes were flown into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in New York City, a third plane hit the Pentagon just outside Washington, D.C., and the fourth plane crashed in a, in a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Almost 3,000 people were killed during the 9-11 terrorist attacks, which triggered major U.S. initiatives to combat terrorism and define the presidency of George W. Bush. Um, we had just moved from uh, Herbert Field, Florida, to Maxwell Air Force Base in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, September 11th, uh, I was working for Centenary College as a college recruiter, and I was in Dallas, Fort Worth area. Actually, uh, in fourth grade elementary school at uh, Sycamore Avenue Elementary, Bohemia. I was five years old, and I remember being in kindergarten class. And we walked into the living room so they can look at a few things, and we saw on the TV the first plane hit uh, the towers. And I was just watching the news as I was kind of waking up and getting ready to go. Um, saw the smoke coming from the first tower. Normal school day, and suddenly there was you know some hushed whispering from other teachers and whatnot and they rolled the tv into the room our teacher just told us to be quiet for some reason so that she can listen in on the news um, station we didn't realize the magnitude until just a few minutes later and then the next plane hit it was a very traumatic time a very scary time 
I just remembered um, my teacher kind of acting weird, but I didn't understand why. Got all of our attention and had us watch what was going on in the news. And shortly thereafter, I think after the first tower fell, they sent us home. We didn't really know what was going on. We didn't realize how like detrimental it was until, of course, later. Where everyone was just, you know, we are one country, we are united kind of thing. Everybody paused and came together. Um, you know, it's like people went out and gave blood. People, you know, realized, I mean, it's, it was a disaster. They kind of, they came to, they, they took, took stock of where they were and they kind of came together for a bit. It definitely shifted the country in a, in a new direction. You saw a lot of people help other people um, that didn't, didn't necessarily know them personally, but everyone immediately stopped what they were doing and just reached out to help their fellow man. To felt, and so I think it, it brought a lot of pride back into our country. My name is Joshua Waldrop. I'm the director of bands and instructor of music here at Bossier Parish Community College. So after high school, I enrolled in Bipsy. I got my associate's degree. I went on to pursue my bachelor's and master's. I performed in symphonies across the Arklatex. I've traveled the United States playing in bands, spending time at recording studios. I'm very excited to bring it back to Bipsy for you. I'm Gulia Chandler. I'm a music program director here at Bossier Parish Community College. We offer an associate degree in performing arts with concentration in music. And also, we now have a new concentration, which is called music production and technology. So maybe you're like me and you have a history of concert band and you want to pursue that past high school or jazz band. Maybe you're a singer and you want to be in the choir. Or if you don't want to play your instrument, Maybe you want to do sound recording and technology. Whatever it is, we have it for you at Bipsy. We have a wonderful performance hall here that seats around 300 that we use throughout the whole school year. If you're not a music major, you can join a choir or band. You don't have to be a music major. You can study whatever you want, but you can participate in those ensembles. One of the best things about Bossier Parish Community College is that we offer music scholarships. So we have some wonderful opportunities here at Bipsy that we'd love for you to take advantage of. Come talk to myself or Dr. Chandler. We'd love to show you what's going on at Bipsy. From the time I was born, I was in a theatrical family. And now I'm dean of the division and pretty much the uh, director of the theater aspects. I love that people come to theater to experience the pain and tragedy and joy of other people's lives. I think that's kind of a beautiful thing. It's a release. The whole experience of being on stage, it's scary. But I think it's, it's kind of worth it because you get this adrenaline rush, you get all these emotions that you don't get to feel every day. I haven't found a similar experience quite like it yet. It comes to a point where everything around me is real. The theater is the one art form that encompasses all art forms. It's not about the final product other than the experience that happens when it happens. As a student, you learn like every aspect of theater. You know, you learn costuming, you learn lighting, you know, you're building sets every day and you're in makeup class and, and you also, you know, take directing and acting. I mean, you do it all.
the hardest thing for some students to, to grasp is the language that they're dealing with and you have to help them along. So when I find a student who has a lot of talent but needs some encouragement in other areas, that's the ones I really enjoy working with the most, I think. Well, the faculty and staff at Bossier Parish Community College is absolutely fantastic. They wish they could keep you forever and they love you and all that, but they want you to spread your wings and fly and they are seriously preparing you for that. We're looking to increase our audience development, which will bring in more people to see how wonderful our students are and how many opportunities that we can give them. Also giving the experience to the students that they need so they can get out of here with their degree and get a job. joined today by Karen Recchia and Carrie Coley to discuss their memories of the events as well as the memorial service Fipsy will be holding on September 11th this year. Now let's start with your personal accounts. Uh, where were you and what were your thoughts when the uh, attacks happened? I know exactly where I was. I was on my way to work at Bipsy, mm -hmm. but we were at the old campus and so I stopped in at what we call then South Campus and the television was on and we were we were just standing there. We were in total shock. We couldn't believe it. I had heard it on the radio and we just stood there. We watched. We watched the towers come down. It was absolute total mayhem. Miss Coley? Uh, the same way. I, I know exactly where I was. I was at home um, actually and my mom had called. She was a teacher at the time and she called and she said, you've got you've to turn on the TV. I don't know what's going on, but they say something's going on. And so I turned on the TV and while I'm on the phone with her and um, about three minutes after I turned on the TV, I watched the second plane hit the tower. Oh, wow. And um, it's just on live TV, there it was. And, and I just remember dropping the phone and then picking it back up going, another plane just hit the tower. Mm -hmm. and, and just speechless, I think, is a great form of just not knowing what to say. Yeah. but. It was like you, something you couldn't pull your eyes away from. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, what were your thoughts after the uh, the event happened, the immediate aftermath, the uh, a couple days later, just the um, the wake of everything? Oh, I think you run the gamut. You know, you talk about the five stages of grief. Yes. You know, as you as you walk through that, and the first part is just denial. I think just being in denial of yeah. is this really happening? Mm -hmm. You know, and then also just you know that anger piece of just being angry and sad all at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Total disbelief. Oh, yeah. And sadness. My husband is a first responder here in the shreveport Bossier area, and so my heart was breaking for the families of the first responders who went in and didn't come out. They went in to try to save people and they didn't come out themselves or spending night after night after night digging through the rubble. And I did have the angry mm -hmm. part of it. How could someone do this to innocent people, to children, to... I, it was just disbelief. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, so I guess we can move on to um, the event we have planned. It's mm -hmm. a, to commemorate the anniversary of 9-11 mm -hmm. and all of the events that took place. So uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the event? Super excited about this event. Um, never imagined we'd be doing this event until about, what, the end of May, 1st of June <laughs> yeah. of, of this year. And uh, we had planned something else. And the more I was thinking about it, the more I thought, this is not okay. We've got to do something to really memorialize this day, yes. mainly because of the veterans we have on campus yeah. and the first responders we have on campus. And we want to do something to honor them. And so it started out 
as almost a first responder, you know, event to honor them and to really thank them for their service. And it turned into this huge memorial event that I never imagined it would be. And so just super excited. Awesome. About yeah. It. Um, and obviously you've already mentioned a little bit about um, you want to hold it to make sure that the first responders and veterans feel Absolutely. Um, some kind of recognition. Um, other than that, you know, what prompted you to, um, you know, like you said, the end of May, just decide to hold this event? You know, it's been 18 years. Why um, is this year the year to step out and make something uh, known of the event? I think um, just the way it happened. You know, we were looking at having a speaker that day anyway, and so I already had the theater booked. Yeah. And so I thought, well, I've already got the theater booked. Why not do something on that day? And it just kind of evolved from there. But the biggest thing is, is looking at the demographic of our campus. Yeah. Most of the students on this campus were either so young that they don't remember the events or they were young enough that they don't remember the impacts yes. of the events. Some were never born. And so I think it's important to educate, of course, everyone about the history of our nation and yeah. how watermark days like this, because that's what it is. It's a watermark day that we can go back to mm -hmm. in history and go, exactly. wow, just like December you know, 8th is a watermark day, the day Pearl Harbor was hit. A watermark day in history that we can go back and look at how our nation changed yeah, um, and how it has um, survived and how it has thrived in the face of intense mm -hmm. adversity. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and do you believe that, uh, like you said, there are people on campus who weren't even born at the time mm -hmm. of 9-11? Um, exactly. People like me who were uh, still young enough to remember the event, but mm -hmm. again, too young to fully grasp the, uh, the severity of everything. So do you believe an event like this is um, it's something to educate the student body and the, the community and bring them together in a way that uh, they haven't felt before? Absolutely. We've actually reached out to middle schools across Bossier to bring them in as well, just so that they can experience this. Um, one of the major things we're going to have on campus, apart from all the equipment, is storyboards um, okay. in the quad. And we have spent the summer, <laughs> literally the summer, and we have taken 3,000 flags. It's 2,983 flags Oh wow! that we have taken, and we've written every name of every person that perished on 9-11 yeah. on all of those flags. <laughs> and they will be displayed in our quad around storyboards. That's awesome, to get so, a visual representation. To get a visual representation of just the enormity Absolutely. of loss on that day. Okay, well, um, and what other events do you have planned during the event? Um, I know you said you have the flags and everything. What is the, uh, the main focus of the event? Main focus of the event, uh, Two separate events. Okay. Number one, from 8.30 to 11.30, we'll be in the quad. Okay. And what we'll do there is we're going to have Bozier Fire. We'll be there with a fire truck. Um, Bozier PD will be there with an armored vehicle. Um, I've talked to Barksdale Air Force Base, and we're hoping to bring lots of equipment in from them. I'll get confirmation on that tomorrow. But what we're looking at is possibly the robot that detects the bombs, oh, cool. along with their fire yeah. department, their EMTs. Several of their officers will be there. Um, supposed to have representation from the National Guard. Um, all of that will be in the quad for you to ask questions, to look at, to, to interact with. Um, we'll have a scavenger hunt for our younger kids as they come in so that they're asking questions mm -hmm. and they are learning as they go about things. We're going to have um, sheets, uh, worksheets for classes so that if professors want to let their classes out to come to the quad event, they will actually have worksheets that they'll fill out from the storyboards and from talking with people in the quad. That's awesome. So that way you can still um, allow the students a, a chance to go out and see if yeah. they have class that day. Absolutely. They still have an opportunity to go out. Absolutely. Yeah. And then from 1230, no, from 12 to 1 in the theater will be our actual memorial event, in okay. which I'm super incredibly excited about that event. Um, we have worked really, really hard just to make it um, not only um, – memorable of of the day but also to look at what happened on september 12th okay, and the resiliency yeah. of that day but um one of the main things that's happening that day is um or in the theater will be roy lively who is a wonderful friend of mine and he is a retired irs agent oh, and he awesome. was actually in washington for a meeting mm -hmm. um the day the plane sit and so he talks about the feelings that he had actually being in washington and watching the plane sit and and feeling the ground beneath him shake yeah and so i mean i'm in incredibly excited about him sharing his experience with our students. That's amazing. I've actually, um, you know, in all the years I've been touching on 9-11 through school and through um, the news and everything, I have heard very little about September 12th. 
Yeah. Um, you know, no one ever really touches base on the complete aftermath of everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that being said, um, this is a community-wide event. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, who is welcome to attend? Who is asked to attend? Um, everybody is open to it? The entire community. Awesome. It's open to everyone. And we hope our veterans will come. We hope that our Bossier schools will send the middle school uh, students, if any high school students want to come. We want our campus to come out, our faculty, our staff, the students that we have here. Um, it, it's just wide open Perfect. and it, it's a learning experience, um, but it's a very, very heartfelt, mm -hmm. me um, memorable experience we think it'll be for the community. Absolutely. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll wrap things up here a little bit. Um, is there anything else you want to touch base on? Um, let people know um, a little bit more about the event and, and as a whole. I know we touched on it pretty well, but um, just to make sure that everyone knows exactly what we're working with here. So on September 11th, Wednesday, September 11th, we will have just a wonderful event in the quad to where you can come out and hang out on the fire trucks and see the armored cars and um, talk with people in our military and our first responders to kind of get a firsthand experience of not just that day, but every day of what they do. And then in the theater, we look forward to really having a wonderful event to commemorate that day. We want to honor the tragedy while we look forward. Absolutely. And so that's kind of our purpose for this event. Perfect. Well, um, thank you guys for uh, joining us today. I very much appreciate you. um, everything you've done to get this event started. Um, thank you guys for your experience and sharing everything like that. So um, with that being said, we'll go ahead and we'll wrap things up. Uh, my name is Katie Brock. Thank you so much for tuning in to this uh, edition of This is Bipsy 911, and we hope to see you at the event next Wednesday. just moved from uh, Herbert Field, Florida to Maxwell Air Force Base in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, September 11th, um, I was working for Centenary College as a college recruiter and I was in Dallas, Fort Worth area. Actually, uh, fourth grade elementary school at uh, Sycamore Avenue Elementary, Bohemia. I was five years old and I remember being in kindergarten class. And we walked into the living room so they can look at a few things and we saw on the TV the first plane hit uh, the towers. And I was just watching the news as I was kind of waking up and getting ready to go. Um, saw the smoke coming from the first tower. Normal school day and Suddenly there was, you know, some hushed whispering from other teachers and whatnot, and they rolled the TV into the room. Our teacher just told us to be quiet for some reason so that she can listen in on the news um, station. We didn't realize the magnitude until just a few minutes later, and then the next plane hit. It was a very traumatic time, a very scary time. I just remembered um, my teacher kind of acting weird, but I didn't understand why. Got all of our attention and had us watch what was going on on the news. And shortly thereafter, I think after the first tower fell, they sent us home. We didn't really know what was going on. We didn't realize how like detrimental it was until, of course, later. For everyone was just, you know, we are one country, we are united kind of thing. Everybody paused and came together. Um, you know, it's like people went out and gave blood. And people, you know, realized. I mean, it's it was a disaster. They kind of they came to they they took took stock of where they were and they kind of came together for a bit. It definitely shifted the country in a, in a new direction. You saw a lot of people help other people um, that didn't didn't necessarily know them personally, but everyone immediately stopped what they were doing and just reached out to help their fellow man to felt and so i think it it brought a lot of pride back into our country
I teach a wide variety of things, including film editing, directing, documentary making, lighting. I fell in love with art as a young child and it's just always something that has stuck with me. You know, I love the whole process of going on set, going back into the editing room, telling a story. That's what I, I really love about film. I got laid off from my job and I figured this was the perfect opportunity to go to school to get a degree for it. As a kid, I was really into geeky stuff. I couldn't think of anything else that I would rather do. They really provide you with uh, the equipment and uh, you know, the necessary tools in order to you know, advance in a career, especially in communications field. Well, one thing that really drew me to video production especially is uh, it's just a way to reach people. And as someone who likes to communicate uh, with other people, I felt that mass communication, especially broadcasting, was a tool that I could use. You get some hands-on experience. They've got good stuff to work with. They really know what they're doing and, and they're willing to pass it on. When our students leave Bozier Parish Community College, they are equipped to get a job immediately or they can move on to a four-year degree.